Hey, what it do? It's your boy Justin Muller bringing you another episode of the Hidden Run. And if you did not know, it is Black History Month. You know what I'm saying? So, with me being black and all, I decided to do something to honor Black History Month. And what I'm doing, uh, I got four episodes dropping in February. It's going to be a segment called uh, Dear Black People. In each episode, I'm going to write a letter to a specific group of black people. And this week, I'm writing a letter to dope dealers first off before i even go into this i'm not a preacher i'm not your grandmother i'm not here to tell you what's right or what's wrong i'm not i'm not a judge none of that you know what i'm saying what you do is what you do i'm here to present you with information and uh whatever you do with the information is up to you dear dope dealers in the 1800s they fought us with whips and chains in the 1900s it was police batons and dogs around the 1970s they stopped fighting us and they created a system that let us fight ourselves. It is no secret that the government was involved with smuggling cocaine to America. Whether they purposely planned on flooding our neighborhoods with it, honestly, is irrelevant. What's relevant is the ruin it left on our neighborhoods. When a drug transaction happens, one person gets poisoned and the other person gets imprisonment. I'm not saying, like, as soon as you sell dope, you're going to get caught. I'm not saying you're going to get caught if you sell dope. But it is damn near inevitable that if you sell dope, you will go to prison or die. Trying to make it in America is hard. We can all agree. Trying to make it in America while being black is even harder. Trying to make it in America while being black and battling a drug addiction is damn near impossible. Prison has many purposes, and one of those is to rehabilitate. Um, With that being said, there are no teachers nor uh, social workers there. So I don't know how much rehabilitation you're about to get when you go there. Just a heads up. Also... When you get to prison, they strip your rights. Now, this is important because I'm about to start talking about prison labor. Many companies have used or used prison labor to cut the cost of production. A few of those being Wendy's. They have hired inmates to process beef. Sprint has used inmates in call centers to provide customer service. Now, if you know Sprint like I know Sprint, I know their customer service phone always ringing because they fucking service suck. Starbucks. Starbucks has used inmates to process coffee sold in stores, earning as little as 23 cents an hour. Corporations may not directly hire inmates, but they will subcontract businesses that do just to hide the fact that they want inmates to help cut down the cost of production. Is this right or wrong? Like I said at the beginning, I'm not a judge and uh, it's neither here nor there. The only thing that really matters is the person who put the prisoner there. And I'm not talking about the system. You mean, oh, schools failed them, the system failed them. I'm not talking about the court. I'm not talking about the judge. I'm not talking about the prisoner. I'm talking about the person in prison. When you decided to sell drugs, you put yourself in prison. You have to take accountability for that. You know what I'm saying? When you sell drugs, you need to know the risk. Stop saying, oh, they did this, they do this. Oh, they flooded the hood with drugs. And what I supposed to do? Nobody ever make it out where I come from. But you could have been the first. You could have been the first to do it in a positive way and be that positive role model for others to look up to you so they know it's a other, it's another way out besides the stereotypical one. Like, I understand peer pressure is a real thing. I understand, like, when you wake up and that's all you see, it's real hard to neglect that, you know what I'm saying, to go in a different route. But at the end of the day, it is still a choice. Nobody put a gun to your head and said, do it. You decided to do it. So if you decide to do it, you have to accept the consequences and repercussions to come with it. I just want to say, dear dope dealer, you're not dumb. You're not stupid. You're not ignorant. You have a large arsenal of business skills. If you had a crew and you was the leader of that crew, you make sure everybody was squared away so you can keep business growing. Little do you know you was a supervisor. You excel in building brands and marketing. You had to market a product that you couldn't just make a commercial for. You know what I'm saying? You got people coming out of town, out of state, maybe out of the country. You know what I'm saying? Just to see you and your product. Or you got to go out of town, out of state, and and meet with somebody so you can get the product. I, I, I'm not an expert in how these things work. But you had to network to get that connection. That's, that's a business skill. You got to recruit the right people. You know who to sell to and who not to sell to. You have a business instinct. You have a business mind. You're very persistent. If you spend the late nights on the block and early mornings on the block, come on, if you tally up all the hours you spend on the block versus the, the, the money you get back, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. You're very persistent. You know what I'm saying? You got to go get a mentality. No matter what you do, I understand what you're doing might, might be negative, 
but you still have a hustler's mentality. And hustler to hustler, pimp to pimp, <laughs> you dig? It's never smart to put all your eggs in one basket. And what I mean by that is never smart to have one source of income. So what I'm getting at with this is you can invest that money in some legal practices. A lawyer wasn't born a lawyer and a dope dealer wasn't born a dope dealer. It was a choice. And you made these choices based on your environment or whatever. But what you really wanted was money. You wanted the nice cars, the nice girls, the the the, the final life or whatever. You didn't want the, the drugs. You don't want the cocaine. You want money. And there's many ways to get money. Stop buying shit that don't appreciate value over time such as chains cars you know all that bull um i mean it's cool to splurge every once in a while but you gotta understand over time that's gonna depreciate value you can't even get the money you spent back from that well you could have invested it in something much more appreciative I, i would say to to make you money over time i'm talking about having your money make money you know what i'm saying hustler to hustler pimp to pimp that's that's a that's a true hustler i just want to say dear mr dope dealer i want you to realize the skills you have and use them in a more positive and legal way if you enjoyed this podcast make sure you put your phone out take a picture you dig and uh, post it on instagram so i know you was listening because that's cool you dig Tune in next week for another letter to my black people. I'm out. Hey, the police, that's how I treat them. We buy our way out of jail, but we can't buy freedom. We buy a lot of clothes, but we don't really need them. Things we buy to cover up what's inside. Because they made us hate ourselves and love their wealth. That's why Shorty Silent, where the ball is at? Drug dealer by Jordan, crack kid by crack. And a white man get paid off for all of that. But I ain't-